We are delighted to present to you the form of critical utility services, the acronym of which is FOCUS. Much as the acronym suggests, the role of the Forum of Critical Utility Services is to bring in focus Can I share the that focus concerns video? the... Can I share the focus video? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. There's some technical list there. Megawan is uh, sharing the video. We are delighted to present to you the Forum of Critical Utility Services, the acronym of which is FOCUS. Much as the acronym suggests, the role of the Forum of Critical Utility Services is to bring in focus all that concerns the construction industry. This is not just for India, but for a coordinated construction industry world over. For those of you who may not be aware, this initiative is to prepare and present a platform where all the verticals of the critical utility services of the construction industry forge into one formidable group that will strive in building unity, aid in diffusing misconceptions and present itself as a platform for discussions amongst these bodies of professionals. This initiative was born on the 26th of October 2020 when the world was almost silent from the after effects of the pandemic. We say silent because the cry for help and riddance from the clutches of the pandemic were deafening. There simply was no place that was safe anywhere in the world. None of the formidable structures that man had erected was safe for protection from the pandemic. It was during these times that we decided on creating a platform so as to be able to present improved and concerted methodologies of developing projects that shall not just be sustainable or resilient but also deliver safe environment and a valuable business opportunity to the promoters not just for some time but for long long time to come times when another generation will inherit the good work that we do today. Our efforts begin with drawing the strength from the fields of architecture, electrical, plumbing, HVAC, safety, fire, security, illumination, vertical transportation, IBMS and IT, solid waste management, and last but not the least, facility management bring them together and forge them into one strong wheel of change to deliver structures that stand in harmony with mother nature on planet earth and this ladies and gentlemen is our mission only when we come together and share our ideas and aspirations will we find the stumbling blocks it is here then that when we are together and focused towards one goal, we will jointly be able to understand and address our challenges as one formidable force. Not just a force in India, but for a global movement that will find solutions, opportunities, and the means to address productivity, safety, quality, developing skills, training, evolving standards and ensuring their implementation thereby becoming centers of excellence and setting benchmarks for generations to pursue and improve and this is our vision we have embarked upon reaching out to various verticals of the critical utility services we will thereafter jointly present our cause to the government and policy makers we will present our vision to the builders 
and we are confident that we will break the shackles of inequality, indifference, ignorance and mistrust and build a world that is one with nature. Ladies and gentlemen, we are not here to conjure a forum, but we are here to establish a body that shall have trust, integrity and honesty for its foundation and stand on the pillars of knowledge, commitment, enthusiasm and foresight of its people. Our invitation to you is open. Come and become a part of FOCUS. It is your contribution and support to FOCUS that will make a difference to the new India that is being created. Let's join and make this the Bharat that we wear. Shining prosperous, bright and a true world leader. Let's now focus. Dr. Pradeep Gaurav, we will request you to also become a member and sure. join this. And I request all the uh, 76 participants participants to join focus and uh, next i'll share a small uh, pdf document uh, megavanan can we have that Yeah, to take our focus activities across the globe, a uh, new Marcom team has been formed, headed by Mamata Rawat as chair of this Marcom activities, and uh, architect Sita Mahalakshmi as the co-chair. We have around nine members in the entire Marcom activities team. And the entire team is headed by Mr. Dominic, he is the vice president of uh, Focus headquarters. So uh, this is the team will bring all bring to you all all the activities what Focus is doing across India as of now. Very soon we'll go globally. As of now, there are nine chapters who are very active: Hyderabad, Pune, Bombay. Jaipur, Bangalore, Chennai, Rajasthan, Chandigarh, Delhi. Uh, at least on an average, every month we are doing around six to seven webinars. All the focus members will get by default all the programs, messages, and links, and all the other details. Who are not focus members, there should be no database to send to them. Uh, as of now, all the webinars and all, we are doing free of cost. But this these webinars will be free of cost in future only for members. So we request all the attendees to become members as soon as possible. And if anybody is interested to volunteer themselves and become active and do uh, contribute to the programs, we welcome them. Thank you. Now, Ramesh Garu, you need to take over. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I would like to welcome all the delegates and the focus team. Uh, a warm welcome to all of you for this uh, afternoon session. And it's an honor to introduce uh, Professor Pradeep Kumar Garu, Director, Central Building Research Institute, Ministry of Science and Technology, Government of India. Uh, he needs no introduction in the industry as he is the is is a well known uh, figure in the construction industry but still as a uh, as a person who whom whom i have read about so i thought you know it's it's a great honor for me to tell a little bit about himself so he has done his bachelor's from hyderabad masters from iit 
Kanpur, a PhD in civil engineering from University of Tokyo at Japan. He's a structural engineer with more than about 25 years of experience in teaching, research, and administration. His area of specialization are the nonlinear behavior of structures and earthquake, earthquake safety assessment of buildings. He has guided a lot of students and then published journals in the national and international arena. He has been a member of fourth post-earthquake recurrence team, including the National Disaster Management Authority, Government of India, which surveyed earthquake-affected areas after the 2001 Bush, 2004 Tumatra, 2011 Sikkim. Yeah, you Sir. can I think, cut short, I'll take over, right? Yeah. Yeah, because uh, time is short, so I think I'll get that time, so. Yeah, surely, sir. Okay. I'll, I'll cut it short. And uh, his and contributions are now? enormous. I think no, time, okay. we do not I have much time. I would hand over the uh, further the things to Pradeep Kumar Garu. Okay. Please. Thank you. Just one second. Let me share my screen. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes, sir. We are able to see. Yes, sir. Yeah, my yes. screen is visible. Right. Okay. So, uh, we have about uh, maybe 35-40 minutes of time. So, I would like to cover as much as possible in the slides what I have prepared. So, it's a very uh, a long lecture. Usually, it takes two hours. Now, uh, I'll try to wrap it up uh, in around 40 minutes. So first of all, a warm uh, good, good evening to all who are present online to listen to this uh, lecture that is on resilience of tall buildings with focus on earthquake and uh, wind forces. So actually, I'm uh, presently uh, director of CSIR Central Building Research Institute which is a constituent uh, laboratory under CSIR, which is part of Ministry of Science and Technology. Now the outline, what I'm going to discuss, that is uh, introduction about risk I'll discuss, that is uh, earthquake risk, then uh, how we uh, calculate the hazard vis-a-vis uh, -vis tall buildings. So in that, uh, what is hazard, why we need to calculate and how we calculate that. And then uh, uh, structural systems, that is tall buildings are structural systems. And what are the irregularities uh, which are mentioned and how to overcome them or uh, how to uh, save, save the building uh, from uh, giving adverse behavior. And then drift and natural period. And finally, concluding remarks. Now coming to uh, tall buildings in India, the need has come because of the large scale urbanization as well as uh, shortage of land. So that is the reason why uh, people want to go for uh, uh, projections into the vertical direction. So that is the main reason. And then if we look at the history, uh, that LIC building, which was very famous, 15 floors building constructed in 1959. So world over tall buildings have come maybe 50 years uh, ago. So 1950s itself, a uh, uh, lot of tall buildings are there world over. But in India, 1959, this is a 15 floors building, very tall building at that time. And uh, yeah, this is the building picture. And 1961, uh, Ushakiran building in uh, Mumbai, uh, 25 floors. But now if we look at uh, presently, there are at least 15 build, 50 buildings uh, in India, which are over 200 uh, meters. And there are many, many projects which are running right now on, in the pipeline of buildings uh, more than 300 meters height. Now the question is, when the capacity of planning, designing, execution, and maintenance is there, so tall building heights start uh, increasing with the permission from uh, regulatory authorities. So that's the whole, uh, uh, what do you call, scenario of tall buildings in the country. Now, coming to uh, the risk, especially tall buildings, two main problems, major problem is wind, and then uh, seismic safety. These are the two things. Now, I'm primarily focusing more on seismic safety and a little bit about uh, wind because this is my area of work. So earthquake risk, as you all know, it consists of three uh, factors. That is hazard is one factor, exposure is another factor, and vulnerability is another factor. So hazard, it is in the hands of nature. 
it is uh, in terms of uh, say what kind of uh, what level of earthquake shaking which that building will experience so it is in terms of our seismic zonation so at present we have zone 2 zone 3 zone 4 and zone 5 the whole country is divided into four zones right now and uh, zone 3 4 5 are uh, uh, treated as moderate to severe seismic risk zone and uh, around 56 percentage of land presently in that areas and uh, more than 80 percent of people are living in that area so that is what is a current uh, scenario and then uh, exposure so this is exposure is uh, that is floor area ratio uh, how who is controlling that municipalities and whoever is giving the permission for uh, building they are controlling fir ratio uh, that that thing so depending on that height of the building in some areas will be more number of floors will be less in some areas all those restrictions will be controlled by municipal authorities and then coming to vulnerability which is the key factor that is in the hands of architects and uh, engineers so these are the three things which constitute uh, uh, risk now this exposure and vulnerability are controllable uh, parameters and also we can control that before earthquake hazard is in the hands of nature so we have nothing to do with that we cannot do anything only thing is land use planning has to be uh, proper so that we are uh, not constructing in the highly hazardous uh, areas especially important uh, projects i'm saying now coming to the tall building code so this tall building code for the first time uh, it came into existence in 2016 and now recently it got revised so till now uh, like even now also many many people are still referring to old code but i'll give you the glimpse of what are the changes in old code compared to uh, new code compared to old code so this is a tall building code so which is available you can download it so 2023 uh, uh, it got released and uh, uh, this code gives guidelines for uh, buildings from 50 meters to 250 meters so if it is less than 50 meters uh, 1893 that is criteria for earthquake resistant design of building that is sufficient and more than 2050 uh, meters building so that means we have to uh, refer to the best practices and uh, do it but this code gives uh, uh, some help in uh, uh, tackling with that but this is 50 to 250 meters this code is uh, prescribing some guidelines now what are the prescriptions in the code so there are mainly uh, four or five things one is how to select the appropriate structural system so that is one how to select structural system and how to proportion the building so like uh, geometry uh, length breadth height all these things how to proportion so that guidelines are given then the next next one is uh, integrity of the structural system so uh, like when when building is designed it should be uh, like convenient and it should not cause discomfort to the uh, occupants and also there are a lot of non-structural elements also in the building so for that this integrity of the system is necessary and then another important thing is safety that is resistance to wind and earthquake forces this addresses the safety clauses so all the clauses are divided into uh, these main uh, sections then there are some special considerations which are related to tall buildings. So these are the things with some of these glimpses I am going to discuss today. Now coming to uh, this standard is not applicable to the uh, places very near to seismic faults. So when we say near field, what is the definition which code is saying? If building is located so within 10 kilometers, so you have to do some kind of a special study uh, for arriving at the design parameters. So that's what uh, code is uh, suggesting. So buildings located within 10 kilometers, that is the shortest distance of seismogenic fault. A more rigorous approach has to be adopted to understand the forces and also to analyze design detail, all these things. That is it's something like a disclaimer kind of thing. Okay. Next, coming to the hazard estimation. So what are the levels of hazard and how do we estimate this one? So the map which is uh, uh, like shown on the slide is uh, uh, 2016 hazard zonation map. So macro zones, so there is a history of this one, 1962, there was the first zonation map. After that, it got revised in 66, 66 and then uh, 84, it got uh, like a major revision. After that, 2016, another major revision. 
So now from last uh, uh, a decade or nearly two decades, this map is in use, that is hazard zonation map. But now uh, this map, the no, no new map, uh, it is felt by all and also by past earthquakes that the level of acceleration or ground shaking experienced by uh, the several areas in the country is not represented properly in our seismic hazard map. Hence, there is a significant improvement or significant like uh, increase in the ground level, uh, sorry, uh, ground motion uh, values or acceleration values. So this map is in the draft code right now. Very soon this code will uh, be uh, released. Maybe, maybe another few months it will it will come into existence. But for time being, in for the purpose of this lecture, I am referring to 2016 code only. Now, what is uh, seismic hazard? So seismic hazard is it is like a process of evaluation of uh, uh, design parameters. So what are the what are the design parameters which we uh, want for the design of building? One is amplitude, and uh, second one is duration, and third one is frequency content. So when these three things are available, we can easily design the building. We can uh, estimate the amount of lateral forces which uh, uh, like a building will experience. And then for that, we can proportion the building and design the building and ensure the safety of occupants and the non-structural elements. And how this process uh, will work, there are two ways. One is deterministic approach and second one is probabilistic approach. I will not go into those details. Now, why uh, this process is needed to understand the behavior of the building when it is subjected to uh, earthquake ground motion. So these are what, how and why of seismic hazard assessment. Now, coming to I'm just uh, like uh, skipping it, uh, put, putting it short, say current seismic hazard map. In current seismic hazard map, we will know the uh, intensity of ground shaking, but how often that uh, area will experience that kind of intensity is not present in that. So, like if we look at, say, the two ways in, in which we can estimate this one, say uh, a probability with which a prescribed level of ground shaking will exceed in 50 years, that is one way. And uh, second one is uh, finding out the acceleration uh, with 10% of probability. So these are the two ways in which uh, we can estimate depending on the uh, building, depending on the site conditions. So these uh, experts will decide uh, this one. So for time being, I'm sticking to the 2016 hazard map, which is uh, uh, like for every zone that value is given without even without uh, mentioning any probability of occurrence. Now coming to the levels of hazard assessment. One is macro hazard assessment. So that's what, what we uh, see in uh, 1893 is uh, macro hazard assessment only. Uh, but what for what purpose this is used? One is design of normal buildings. If it is important buildings, say dams, power plants, uh, we need to do more rigorous analysis and get the design parameters. But this code 2000, that 1893-2016 uh, is used for design of normal structures. And uh, then the range of this hazard estimation is 300 kilometers up to 100 kilometers. That is the range, rough range. Then second one is micro uh, zonation. So micro zonation purpose of that is what uh, one is risk assessment and disaster management. That is one purpose. And uh, more uh, rigorously, we can use uh, say land use planning also can be done using this micro zonation. And again, land use planning is again for the purpose of building design. And when we see the grid size is 0.5 kilometers up to 10 kilometers, that is the range in which we can do. Then the third one is site specific. This site specific is when we are designing, say, very important structure, say, for example, say, uh, a 100 story building or 50 story building. Uh, definitely we need to estimate uh, design parameters thoroughly. So there is a, a detailed procedure which is available uh, in the literature, but uh, for uh, the paucity of time, uh, first we un uh, under try to understand the uh, seismic source. That means we identify seismic source, that is step one. Step two is we select attenuation relationship, that is how much it will be amplified, uh, the uh, motion at the bedrock, till the uh, ground surface level. And then uh, we do this probabilistic analysis to estimate the maximum acceleration. And then we estimate and after that, we uh, take the shear wave propagation to the ground surface. And finally, the acceleration level with building will experience. So, so till that point we will take and that uh, value we use in building design. Uh, building design. 
So this is as uh, uh, fine as one meter scale also we can uh, do this one. Now coming to uh, the tall building. So what are the proposed changes? So this there are several uh, changes which are proposed compared to the first uh, version of the code that is uh, 2016. Present version is 2023. There are several clauses. One is drift clause which is uh, changed and vertical acceleration of uh, uh, floor that is deleted and a maximum horizontal acceleration requirement is revised and P delta effects and then uh, stability coefficient. So these are some of the uh, changes and also structural systems are also it should be well distributed uh, structural walls. So these are some of the changes which are prescribed. Now coming to uh, like some basics of that. So old code, I'll focus on the new one. Though say height of the building. So when height of the building is there, it, there, it has some restriction uh, based on two uh, parameters. One parameter is seismic zone in which that building is located or building is going to be located. And the second one is what kind of structural system is adopted uh, for that tall building. So as you can see, there is a matrix kind of thing given. So if it is moment resisting uh, frame or moment frame, it is applicable only in zone two and zone three. But uh, if we want to go for taller heights or uh, uh, increase the height of the building, then we have to adopt uh, a structural system with walls and a frame tube. So code is allowing up to 250 uh, meters. As you can see here, maximum height. So higher zones, it is uh, uh, 180 meters is a restriction. And then moderate seismic zones, uh, code is allowing up to 225 meters. And then lower, lower seismic zones, uh, it is 250 meters. Now other condition is if it is moment frame, then it is not at all permitted in higher seismic zones that is zone four and zone five. And then coming to uh, moment frame, uh, height is also restricted up to uh, 80 meters. So it is not that say a, a, a designer or builder or a contractor who uh, were doing in uh, zone two and zone three, suddenly they got a project and then uh, wanted to do in zone four and zone five. So code is uh, seriously restricting that kind of height. So height has to be uh, within the limits prescribed in this one. Now coming to slenderness ratio. So this slenderness ratio is uh, nothing but uh, height to base dimension. So in uh, two directions. So slenderness ratio, maximum slenderness ratio, the code is allowing up to 10. As you can see, and uh, again, this uh, is dependent on what kind of structural system we are following. And second is in which zone that structure is lying. So these, these are the two conditions on which it lies. So if slenderness uh, ratio is more, what are the issues which uh, building will face? One is there is a possibility of structural damage. If building becomes more and more slender, there is a possibility of structural damage. And the second one is non-structural damage. Why non-structural damage? Even when the building is not getting damaged, but it is deflecting, so displacing, then there are a lot of non-structural elements. So in terms of say, like a glass facade is there, that is non-structural element. Then uh, uh, false ceiling may be there. And then there may be a lot of uh, equipment, machinery, all those things will be there. So those things will be uh, like severely damaged if we are not doing the, uh, if we are not limiting the drift. So that's why code prescribed 0.4% of story height is the maximum which it can be allowed. Yeah, now coming to if slenderness ratio is more, then what happens is there is a uh, effect called Poisson's effect. So the Poisson's effect is this is the edges will uh, 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 like, uh, uh, what do you call, will be uh, stressed a lot. So uh, from the base or from the fixity, fix, from the fixed end conditions, fixed end, ends. So up to what uh, height uh, there will be uh, distress up to the height equal to the base width of the building. So you can clearly see this one. So this portion, what is shown uh, in the diagram under the red box, that will uh, suffer uh, severe stresses and there might be damage. So that's why if slender buildings are there, there should be a special treatment in these uh, zones. Or maybe plan, select a uh, structural system, which uh, is not giving rise to such kind of uh, damage there. Now come another thing is, 
uh, always prefer uh, simple geometry. Simple geometry as simple as uh, a square, a rectangle, or elliptical. Square also has uh, has some uh, restrictions in terms of uh, natural periods in both the directions. So rectangular, rectangle, uh, rectangular uh, plan is more preferable, and elliptical plan, elliptical plan including circle. You can see this simple uh, cartoons are showing you that. Now coming to if there are irregularities, what will be the problem in uh, uh, structural behavior? Now, what uh, code says is, when do we say structure is irregular? So you can see here, if there is any re-entrained corner, that means if any edge is uh, protruding out uh, compared to the more than 15% along the same length, uh, code is saying that it has re-entrained corners. So what will happen if re-entrained corners are present then structural behavior or there will be stress concentration at this lo those locations and then earthquake performance of such building will be poor. So that is the problem. Okay, then uh, how do we uh, address this one? So in that case, say in uh, this that case, rigid flow diaphragm analysis, uh, like if applicable, that can be conducted and then uh, uh, both flexible and rigid floor and then worst case uh, has to be taken into consideration. So that gives to flexibility. Now coming to plan aspect ratio. So plan aspect ratio uh, as much as as far as possible it should be less than uh, 5. If it is more than 5 what happens again diaphragm action uh, will not be rigid it will be flexible even in, in case of L-shaped building each leg has to satisfy that condition. And then next one is openings. So if there are any cutouts and openings in the uh, uh, slab, then there will be discontinuity in their in-plane stiffness. So what code is uh, prescribing is it should not be more than 50%. And also this 50% should be uh, in uh, such a locations, uh, such a locations that flexible floor diaphragm effect is not coming. Uh, building should have rigid floor diaphragm. Otherwise. Uh, like perform the analysis using rigid floor diaphragm and again take the worst condition. Now coming to torsional uh, irregularity. So this torsional irregularity, when can we say there is building uh, is torsionally irregular? If, see, if, if when a building is well proportioned, then it will not twist along its vertical axis. If the distribution of lateral load resisting elements are in an even manner. Otherwise, building, building will twist about its vertical axis. That is torsional irregularity. So, like you can see this one, torsional irregularity. So, this is clockwise. So, center of mass and center of resistance. Uh, center of mass. Usually, earthquake induced force acts at center of mass. And uh, if there is a gap between center of mass or eccentricity between center of mass and center of resistance, uh, in, in this case, clockwise uh, uh, twist, that is twist will happen. And in the next case, you can see this is anti-clockwise twist will happen. Uh, so uh, twist is around center of resistance. Okay? So then there will be complex uh, behavior. So when can we uh, say that this torsional irregularity is there? You can say like if uh, uh, a floor is displacing one edge of the uh, displace, uh, horizontal displacement, is 1.5 times more than the minimum horizontal displacement in that direction. So then we can say that building is torsionally irregular. Now this is a this this is the definition of torsional irregularity. Now how do we uh, fix this problem? First, first we have to compute the average uh, uh, total displacement and then check uh, sorry, check uh, if maximum displacement is in between. 1.2 times to 1.4 times uh, this average displacement. Then we tweak in the uh, configuration and then perform three-dimensional uh, 3D analysis and uh, uh, get the forces and design the building. That is one way. Second is uh, uh, like if it is if delta max is more than 1.4 times of the average uh, displacement, the entire structural configuration has to be changed so that it falls in this uh, limits of uh, uh, torsional irregularity. Then coming to natural modes of vibration. So as the definition says, you can see natural period of fundamental torsional mode of vibration shall not exceed 90% of the smallest of the two translational modes. So this is also another caution which code is making. 
for a good behavior of the tall building. Now you, you can see here x axis, y axis, x direction, y direction and the uh, z direction that is uh, torsion or twist. Now in for example, I'm taking so fundamental natural period in x direction is say 2.7 seconds and uh, that in y direction is 3.2 seconds. Now, and uh, in uh, theta direction, that is uh, in rotation about vertical axis, it is 2.54 uh, seconds. So in this criteria, it is violating the code clause, as you can see clearly. So Tx is less than Ty. Now, 0.9% of uh, Tx1, that is into 2.7, that is 2.43. So our theta, that is a uh, natural period in the uh, torsional direction, the first fundamental uh, period is more than that. So we have to proportion the building in such a manner that it is less than that. So in this case, when it happens, if the structural walls are more concentrated towards the center of the building, so if you even it out and then move towards the edges, then the torsion effect will come down. So that is not good. Now, if we, if we revise the design and say after, after the revision, I'm not going to that details. After the revision, see 2.55 uh, seconds in X direction and uh, theta, what we got is 2.18 seconds. And if you can look at uh, this one, 0.9%, that is 90% of Tx is 2.3. Uh, t theta is less than uh, 2.3. So that means this is safer design. So that's how uh, before going for original design, we have to uh, understand and uh, sort out the issues uh, so that uh, code provisions are properly adhered to. Then coming to the drift calculation. So what code prescribes is uh, like drift limits are given for the uh, like lateral forces which are under working load conditions. So what code says is it is limited to H by 500, okay, H by 500. And for a single story, it is giving some uh, kind of uh, relaxation. That is uh, any single story, it can go up to H by 400. And then uh, for earthquake loads, which are factored load because response reduction factor we use. So drift levels are given little uh, higher that is H by uh, 250. This is actually equal to that is 0.4% uh, of uh, uh, floor height. So here why? Because uh, uh, wind design is elastic design and uh, earthquake design is nonlinear because cracking is uh, 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 cracking takes place and also this earthquake is cyclic load and wind is in one direction at shifted axis and then it uh, oscillates there. So more uh, design should be very very careful when it comes to wind designs. The definition of working loads are given. One example I'm showing you here. So displacement is delta i, small delta i, and a drift is the difference in displacement between the floors. Drift ratio is if you divide it by floor height, that is drift ratio. So for example, a building of 20 floors height, each floor uh, taking three meters uh, height, 64 is the total height. Now in uh, say drift in any floor, as an example, five millimeter is given. Now, if we put the conditions, delta max by H is uh, say uh, five millimeters by 3000, that is floor height, 0 0.00167 is the drift ratio. Whereas allowable drift ratio is that one by 500, that is 0 0.002. So that means what six mm is allowable, whereas actual drift is uh, five mm. So to, for of, uh, overall building, it is 120 mm. Now these conditions, if for one floor, it is uh, uh, H by 400, that is 3000 millimeters by 400, that is 7.5 millimeter. Now, if we look at say all the conditions and check for earthquake, it is H by 250, that is 12 mm is allowed. And uh, uh, for any uh, floor, it is H by 500, that is uh, uh, six millimeter. This is for wind. And then uh, H by 400, sorry, uh, th this is for any uh, single floor maximum allowable is 7.5 millimeters. So, whereas in example, we have taken five millimeters, that means building is safe. Now coming to dual system. So sometimes moment frames and uh, structural walls are used in combination. So in that case, the code puts a condition that at least 25% of uh, uh, lateral forces should be resisted by uh, moment frames. So how do we put this into uh, uh, use? So let me uh, give an example, say case one. So in this total force, uh, uh, say let us take 100 is a 100 uh, K is a total lateral force. So structural walls are shown in black and then moment frames are shown in red. 
So each due to its uh, relative stiffness, each uh, lateral load resisting element is taking this proportion. So total uh, uh, load resisted by frames is, say you can see 10K, 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 so 30K, 30% 30 is resisted by uh, 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 moment frames and 70% is resisted by two structural walls. So that means code clause is satisfied. Now, if code clause is not satisfied, how do we uh, do the correction? Now let us look at it. So in this case, 42.5% uh, uh, and 42.5% put together 85% of lateral force is taken by uh, structural walls. Sorry. Whereas uh, moment frames are taking only 15%. So that means this is violating the code clause of a dual system. So we need to revise and you can see what we need to do is no need to change any design of uh, structural wall, but we need to change the uh, proportioning of uh, moment frame such that uh, at least 25% is uh, taken, uh, lateral force is taken by uh, uh, moment frame. As you can see here, uh, 5k here it is increased to 10k, 10k and 5k. So the total 25%. So that's how we do the uh, correction and the code is allowing us to do the correction. Now coming to ambient vibration uh, test, actually large number of uh, buildings uh, are coming up, tall buildings are coming up in the country, but uh, very few ambient vibration tests have been conducted to understand the uh, natural period what building uh, has after the construction. So uh, right now we are using this formula what is prescribed in IS 1893, but it is uh, uh, a strong need right now to have a natural period expression for uh, uh, empirical expression for natural period for uh, 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 tall buildings specifically. So as you can see here, uh, for bare frames and for RC structural walls, uh, detailed expressions are given in 1893. But the uh, like uh, thinking uh, by many researchers is this uh, uh, period expression is not sufficient. We need to have our own expression. So for that, we have conducted a, a small uh, study and uh, tested several tall buildings in uh, India, in several cities, and came up with one uh, uh, like recommended one, uh, uh, expression for tall buildings, natural period for tall buildings. So I'm just skipping the procedure. So uh, this was conducted by uh, IIIT PhD students, I'm just skipping these things. So first you collect the raw data uh, and uh, means, um, uh, install the, uh, high precision vibration sensor on a building and then uh, uh, collect the data and the raw data you need to do the baseline correction and after that uh, FFT uh, fast Fourier transform to get the natural frequency. So uh, this is the procedure to uh, get it. This is a MATLAB code and uh, several buildings were uh, tested. Nearly 100 buildings were uh, tested. Still more data is needed. As you can see here, the data of around 42 buildings are given. So whose heights are ranging from 16 floors up to uh, 42 floors. And you can see uh, in longer direction and shorter direction, both put together 82, 84 data points are available in two directions. So based on that, we performed regression analysis. And uh, finally, it, uh, a two parameter expression is uh, 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 like suggested. So for RC moment resisting frame, so T uh, is equal to 0 0.032 into X raised to the power of 0.75. This is one uh, like uh, uh, expression recommended. Standard uh, estimate of error as you can see. So whichever gives uh, minimum uh, error that can be adopted. So presently up to 30, uh, up to 60 meters uh, height, 0 0.03 to h raised to the power of 0.75. And uh, uh, this one, uh, above 60 meters height, 0 0.009 h raised to the power of 1.1. Uh, so as it is clearly understood from this data is, uh, empirical expression of a tall building is mainly dependent on height rather than on the uh, shape. But many more studies have to be conducted to uh, get a better expression. Yeah. And then P delta effect. So another five minutes, I'll uh, close my uh, lecture. So P delta effect, as you can see, tall building. So this is uh, uh, described in a line, in line diagram. So vertical load is uh, P and then uh, lateral force uh, V is there. So actually this vertical load is, uh, there is no separate vertical load acting. It is a self rate of the building itself. 
So you can see MP, that is primary moment is lateral force multiplied by height. That is the primary moment. So when it comes to say when building uh, deflects due to the action of lateral force, now this uh, P comes into picture, which is axial load is also uh, adding to the uh, moment. So that is the primary moment. So MS, this is secondary moment, which is uh, weight of that uh, building multiply by that delta. So that we have to multiply at every uh, location. That is the secondary moment. Now the total moment is uh, VH multiply, so V into H plus PW this is a total moment. Now from this one, if we can compute, say equivalent uh, share. So that means MT divided by total height of the building will give us equivalent uh, share. Then after that, if uh, we divide that by uh, the lateral force that will become the dimension, dimensionless parameter, that will become one plus P delta by VH. So the second part that is P delta by VH is a stability factor. So what uh, code is prescribing is this stability factor should not be greater than 0.2. So that is what is uh, P delta effect. If it is more than that, then we have to revise the uh, uh, structural uh, proportioning such that it comes below that. So that this is the code clause. Now coming to the transfer raised range, this is only prescriptive clause. Then again, what code uh, is saying is if, if building is taller than 150 meters and if it is uh, lying in zone three and zone four areas, so triaxial accelerometers are necessary or to be installed to capture uh, translational and twisting behavior of the building. However, in practice, that is this is not happening. So I urge if there are uh, designers and uh, uh, builders, uh, please uh, take care of this one. The same uh, recommendation is given to uh, uh, like capturing the wind behavior of the building. Again, if it is more than 150 meters height, uh, a thorough instrumentation is needed in the form of uh, anemometers and accelerometers uh, to measure wind speed, acceleration, and the direction in which uh, these, these are acting on the top of the building. So with this, uh, I would like to conclude a short summary. That is, uh, yeah, we do have problem due to earthquake and uh, uh, wind, especially when, when uh, we talk about uh, tall buildings. As I mentioned, uh, around 60% uh, of India is prone to moderate to severe earthquake events. So uh, tall buildings are coming up. Many, many tall buildings are coming up. I, the, actually, this building uh, uh, picture is from uh, Nepal. After 2015, Nepal earthquake, uh, the damaged building. And then... Uh, uh, Bureau of Indian Standards are revising course from uh, time to time. A general awareness has to be uh, raised and a lot of uh, workshops have to be conducted on the latest development of these course. And uh, we all need to follow for the safety of uh, uh, people. So safety is the first priority. After that only all other aspects of uh, buildings will come. So with these uh, few words, uh, with these uh, 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 concluding uh, remarks, I sincerely thank uh, entire uh, focus and its organizers for inviting me for this uh, uh, lecture and uh, all my colleagues and students, my colleagues at uh, uh, CSIR CVRA presently where I'm working. And uh, uh, like before that, uh, students, PhD students of IIIT Hyderabad, I sincerely acknowledge their work and some uh, figures I've taken from uh, Clipart. Thank you. And uh, yeah, over to you. Sir, uh, a couple of questions people have asked. So yeah, can I can I take up these questions? Uh, one second. Sharing uh, removed. No? Sharing is removed. Uh, that's okay, sir. That's okay. But uh, in the down uh, Q and A box is there. If you click on that, you'll get. Sure. Question sure. answers. Yes, sir. One second. Yeah. Um, webinar chart or Q and A. Sorry. Can I read? Sir? Can I read? No, I'll, 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 I'll go through it. I'll go through it. Yeah. How cross braced wood frame structure is more suitable for building in uh, zone five in comparison to uh, concrete structure? So the answer to this, uh, uh, like Mr. Ashutosh Jaiswal has asked, so it will definitely improve the lateral resistance uh, since it is zone five. 
So cross bracings will definitely increase the lateral resistance. So that is the answer. Next, uh, uh, for high rise uh, structures, construction in black cotton soil, how the design is made and what are the key factors to be taken into consideration? Yeah, mainly black cotton soil uh, foundation is the main problem, not the building height. So uh, maybe uh, pile draft uh, is more suitable there. But uh, here I would say uh, expert geotechnical advice is necessary for understanding because tall building is a heavy investment and I request uh, uh, engineers to uh, like uh, spend some more money and get a thorough soil uh, assessment done and also expert advice on what type of foundation is suitable there. Okay, and code uh, is also available for help. Yeah, are there any performance matrix in place to evaluate the ability of tall building to recover functionality after the earthquake or uh, storm? Yeah, structural audit is uh, needed uh, to be performed. Okay, Achha, another thing is uh, if uh, attendee is anonymous, uh, I will not answer that question. Okay, yeah, name is needed so that at least it will be in record. Can we start using suggested new empirical time periods yet? No, 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 not, not yet. So it has to be uh, debated and we have to include that in the code, then only use it. So uh, as, as far as uh, present time is concerned, please use the BIS prescribed standards. Okay, that what I've presented in the empirical expression is uh, still under discussion. It has to be discussed and we have to put in the uh, code. It may take some time, but till that time, uh, use uh, uh, 1893 values only. How do we estimate empirical time period if we have mix of uh, building structural system? Yeah, actually empirical expression uh, for natural period is not for specific building type. It is uh, general. Suppose say if four, 500 buildings are tested, then we get a general estimate and that is a upper limit. And if you uh, have a better estimate by doing proper analysis, then definitely we can follow that, but with uh, some prescribed limits, what code is suggesting us. Okay, then uh, uh, what are your views on comfort criteria of uh, tall buildings? Yeah, so see comfort criteria, comfort uh, it depends on so many factors. I am now telling only on the vibrational aspects. See, vibrational uh, limits have to be uh, lower than what code is suggesting, acceleration levels, and also the drift level. Say, uh, example, say tall building of 100 floors height is there, and uh, on each oscillation, ambient vibration oscillation, uh, building is say moving, say for example, say um, maybe 30, 40 centimeter this side, that side. So uh, from the point of view of safety of the building, uh, there is no problem, it is safe. But uh, occupants will not feel comfortable. So for that reason, uh, vibration uh, levels have to be uh, under certain level where human comfort is not compromised. So that is another thing. Yeah, and then uh, one second, how many I can take? Yeah, are the time periods tested are only for seismic or can be applied for uh, wind also. No, this is a uh, like uh, what do you call uh, dynamic property of the building. So whatever forces it is, whether it is a wind or uh, uh, earthquake, uh, it's oscillation of the building is oscillation of the building. Okay. Tips to clear torsion and st soft story issues. So what uh, I've explained, explained that is a tip or maybe you can uh, refer to code clause again. Uh, this is question by Vamsi Krishnayam. For tall buildings of 100 meters above, if there is no mass asymmetry at the different floors, then the construction sequence analysis to be done. Is it uh, mandatory? Yes, definitely construction sequ sequence analysis uh, is to be done uh, because there are a lot of secondary effects which uh, come into picture after the design. So construction sequence analysis is necessary. Uh, best method for uh, transfer slab is? Uh, no, this is based on uh, practice. Actually, transfer slab is not yet included in the details of the transfer slab are not yet included in the uh, 
uh, code. Hopefully in the next revision, maybe uh, somebody may suggest that and we may take it up. Okay. Can you say a few words about standalone type versus clustered type uh, buildings? Okay. Okay. See, cluster type building, if, if they are independent, uh, that, that is equal to standalone only. But if there is one raft or one uh, uh, transfer slab, and on that many, many tall buildings are protruding, then uh, worst case scenario analysis is needed. So that is very much because many uh, townships are getting developed like that, especially where the tall buildings are there, they are getting developed. So another thing is in India, this is still in the early stages. So before we uh, have a mushroom of tall buildings and uh, landing problem, I think we need to have more and more discussions and iron out all the major issues. Yeah, are there any guidelines on do's and don'ts and note to have wind tunnel uh, tests? Actually, very few facilities are available uh, for doing wind tunnel uh, tests in the, in the country. Uh, we need to have more and more uh, such kind of uh, uh, facilities. So, for example, uh, tall building, this uh, wind analysis, see our institute, uh, uh, Central Building Research Institute, uh, can be of help to you. And also we have another uh, laboratory under the C CSIR umbrella that is Structural Engineering Research Center, which is at, uh, which is at uh, uh, Chennai, located at Chennai. So, and uh, some IITs have these uh, facilities, you can consult them. And uh, what? A transfer plate versus transfer girder or a voided slab, uh, which is better? Sir, directly one single answer cannot be given. This is a question is by Rajvardhan Retigaru. It is dependent on case to case. So uh, if you are engineer or maybe if you are giving the work to engineer, so they have to convince and uh, if there is a, a proof checking agency, they have to get convinced which one is uh, better. I think I have completed all. One more last one. Now only it came. What will be the implication of base isolation on drift and lateral uh, displacement at a uh, uh, higher level? Yeah, when uh, base isolation uh, uh, is used, there is a separate code which has come right now. I think uh, IS 893 part 7. So uh, I don't uh, exactly know the drift levels, but uh, these things are prescribed there. So you may uh, look into that. Yeah, thank you. So there's one more question, sir, which went unanswered, if you can answer, by Dr. Ram Prakashan. Are there any guidelines on do's and don'ts and oblique or a note to have wind tunnel tests? I have answered already. Okay. Yes, yes. Yeah. Shall we close now? Yeah, yeah. Uh, with the with the chair, uh, the permission of with the, the chair, I would like to propose a vote of thanks. Uh, but before that, uh, it's a critical topic and a critical uh, utility forum. I know it was a. I'm audible now. Yes, yes, audible. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, the, uh, Mr. Pradeep, just we have the very quick up announcements. Uh, December 13th and 14th uh, of 2024, Hyderabad chapter is uh, organizing one event uh, which is on construction technology advancements. And we have series of events which will be posting all this uh, 100 plus uh, who joined. The 26th September, we have uh, building resiliency. And then again, we have 17th October, we have fostering resiliency for people and the uh, planet. So, we have uh, the theme, uh, no the resiliency of the buildings uh, uh, this year. So we will have a series of events and we will be hosting it. Uh, and uh, Dr. Pradeep, uh, I, I know you are a global person, but for us, you are a very much local Hyderabadi. And then uh, it's uh, great to associate with you. And uh, I know the, 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 this the, this forum is, uh, or this particular event is attended by the cross-section of the industry, not by only structural engineers. So it was, as such, the dynamics is a little tough subject, but you know, others, it's a very tough subject, but it's a very critical. The buildings are excited, but we are not considering the excitement of the buildings post Construction. I think it's a very, very serious issue. We'll have some kind of a workshop or a training session uh, under your guidance later for the two days and focus will be very happy to organize that. So I thank you uh, for taking out the time from your very, very busy schedule and uh, uh, spending some time with us and uh, throwing some light on uh, and a seriousness of the tall buildings. And uh, I thank uh, focus 
head headquarters who is supporting us and the uh, team hyderabad uh, of focus and 100 plus uh, participants we started with 35 but it's century crossed and we all going to be a part of focus i thank each and everybody and uh, i uh, appreciate the efforts of our chairman who is dynamic like you know uh, and very very you know uh, enthusiastic about the events and all so ramchandra raju thank you and thanks uh, everybody because uh, the guest has to leave now so we know the importance of the time uh, what he is uh, spending for the country uh, thanks you thank you thanks a lot thank you all thank you all, thank thank you all. all the participants thank you. thank you very much and thank you. thanks you organizers and anchuri garu bye thank you thank you very much